Could you turn with me to Joshua chapter 3? Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests of the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. That's a half a mile. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Amen. Amen. Again, that fifth verse, the B part. Again, I'm going to look at for the, tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I want to talk about this morning experiencing God's great wonders. Yeah. Experiencing God's great wonders. Let's pray. Gracious Lord our God, we thank you and we praise you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to, to, to preach your word. And we pray, Lord, that you would use me to feeble instrument to communicate your truth, and we pray, Lord, that as the word of God is being communicated faithfully, that you would be at work in the hearts of your people, helping us to overcome our fallen hostility toward the truth, and, but, and to receive your word with full assurance, knowing, Lord, that your word comes to us with full and binding authority that you may continue, Lord, to demonstrate your claim over our lives as your people, that we may in all things commend ourselves as your people, even in this hour of, de of this devastating pandemic, that you would give us that kind of grace and that kind of life. We ask all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus, and for his sake I pray, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Israel's history is a record of God's faithful love. On numerous occasions, they are faced with problems, and God delivers them from all of their trials by his mighty hand. God never fails them. Under every crisis, under every situation, he proves to be a solution to every problem and a supply to every need. That God is faithful. And he demonstrates his faithfulness in times when Israel is up against it, when their back is against the wall, he flexes his muscle, shows his strength, and rescues his people. Beloved, it's, it's, it's on that account that we should have the confidence to overcome our fears in the midst of this pandemic. Yeah. That our God is faithful. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, he, is. He, he has never forsaken, he has never disappointed, he has never failed his own people. He always comes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Lord always makes a way. Amen. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He always makes a way for us. And because of that, we should, we should have the fear, uh, the, the faith to overcome our fears, the confidence to stand 
firm and tall in the midst of our situation because we know that our God is going to be there for us. Amen. That our God is mighty. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And let me say this, that, 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 that's, that that's the message of this particular passage of scripture. That God's presence among his people establishes the certainty of victory no matter what tomorrow brings. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. It doesn't matter what we face tomorrow. And let me say this, that sometimes it's hard to make it through the day without worrying or being concerned about the outcome of what tomorrow will be. But we can have rest assured that if God is on our side, if God is our God and he's in our midst, that we have everything that we need to, to be sustained in whatever province he puts us in. That God might is going to throw some things at you, and when life throws things at you, when, when, when you can know that with God by your side, you have everything you need to face whatever it is he's going to put before you. Amen. Amen. And I, that, that's my comfort, that's my assurance that I know this as a Christian, that God will never leave me where his grace cannot sustain me. That whatever God, whatever situation God puts me in, whatever I find myself by following and doing his will, he has what it takes. He will support me in the midst of that situation. Isn't that, isn't that a comfort to know? Amen. That as Christians, we have through God's mighty hand support Amid the evils of this world, amid affliction and temptation, we have everything we need in God's mighty hand. That God supports his people. The Bible says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. God is the one who's supporting you. God is the one who's holding you up. God is your strength. God is your sure foundation. Now the believers have that. That's why we need not live in fear about what tomorrow will bring because we don't know what God has planned for us tomorrow. But I do know this. I do know that whatever he has planned for me, he's able to keep me from falling. He's able to preserve me in the midst of those, whatever that trial may be. God has prepared himself to preserve me in those situations too. That's what you learned in this text. Joshua was inspired by what the spies had told him in chapter 2. They told him and let him know in no uncertain terms that the land that had been sworn to them as a heritage was now there for the taking. He says in chapter 2, the end chapter 2, the spies let him know that the people's hearts have melted. Certainly the Lord will deliver the land of Jericho over to us. And now the people are and here in chapter 3 preparing to go over on the other side of Jordan However, when they come to the Bible says the Jordan River, they are met with the crisis. The Jordan River is overflowing its banks. Amen. 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 They arrive at the Jordan River at a time when, 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 when the harvest will come, when normally, annually, the Jordan River would overflow its banks. The waters are troubled. Amen. The waters are raging. But yet God promised them, promised them a land and a home on the other side of Jordan, and yet the waters are raging, making the waters uncrossable. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, you might have to find yourself in situations that you could not tunnel through or you could not see your way past. God has prepared those moments to show us his mighty hand. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You see, trials are not a challenge to God, they're an opportunity. I love that song that says God specializes in things stop impossible and he can do with no other power, Holy Ghost power can do. Amen. That God has power that the average person does not have. God has the power to do miracles. God can work miracles in your life. Amen. We serve that kind of God. That he's all power. He's a God of wonders. Israel's back is against the wall. They're facing a troubled water. What does God do? God, in that moment, through the obedience of the priests, when they step into the water, God again shows his mighty hand. The waters of the Jordan River are cut off, and the people walk across 
on dry land, they received a safe conduct by their God Jehovah into the land of promise. And again, I, I say that again to assure us, to give us the confidence to overcome our fears. That whatever tomorrow holds for the church, whatever tomorrow holds for this country, we have the assurance that through his power we can overcome it. Amen. 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 That our God is not controlled by anything, but in control of everything. Amen. And that's the God we serve. We serve a God who is supreme ruler over all things in creation. He's the one who can speak to a raging sea and say, peace be still. And the waters will shut down. Amen. We serve that kind of God. Don't you know that when you are traveling with Christ Jesus and he you have him on your boat, you ain't got to worry about when storms break out because he can still have a space. Peace be still. He can speak to the raging waters and the waters must obey his voice. Amen. We serve that God. We serve a supreme God. The sovereign, almighty ruler of the universe. That's the God we serve. There are three things I want us to see this morning about that help us flesh out this idea. And I want us to consider, first of all, the blessings and benefit of being in covenant relation with God. The blessing and benefit of being in covenant relation with God. And secondly, I want to look at the function of wonders. The function of wonders. The fun wonders, God's wonders serve a particular purpose. Amen. Contrary to popular belief, God is just not dishing out miracles. <laughs> God is not just dishing out blessings. Every blessing God sends into our life is to serve a particular purpose. And then number three, God's power and might on display. God's power and might on display. The blessing and benefit of being in covenant relation with God, the function of wonders, and lastly, God's power and might on display. Look at chapter 3 of Joshua, verse 2. And it reads, and it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. What was the ark of the covenant? The Ark of the Covenant was a special golden box. And in that box was contained the two tablets of the, of the Ten Commandments that showed God's people how they were to live. But also there were cherubim, that we call that the mercy seat, that showed them that if God's people failed to, to, to uphold their commandments, that God had promised them forgiveness if they would repent. But not just that. The ark was also symbolic of God's actual presence among his people, that God was near them. Amen. That the ark was there to communicate the person and the provisions of their covenant God, that God was the one who was near them, God was the one who was providing them, God was, was by their side, watching over them, and guiding them. And let me say this to us, that that's out of comfort and consolation as Christians, that when we walk with the Lord, Troubles and trials may come, but that we're going to be all right because God will never lead you wrong. God cannot lead you wrong. Amen. 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 I'm not saying that we are exempt from trials, that we are exempt from afflictions, but when you're following the Lord, you can never go wrong. Amen. 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 God always leads his people and provides them with certain protections and provisions and certain benefits from being, from being his people. The Lord is my shepherd. That's a covenantal statement. He's not everybody's shepherd. He's the, he, he's the shepherd of those who put their faith in Christ Jesus and who in their hearts determined to obey him. He's not, he's not everyone's shepherd. He's your shepherd. Aren't you glad that we have a shepherd? Note this carefully. The Bible says that, that, that there was, the people of God were ordered to watch for the ark, which points to the mystery Host of the mystery and, 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 and the power of Christ and salvation. They had to watch for the ark, and that ark was to go before them. Amen. Now, I think this is important for a number of reasons, and I'll put this in your notes. But the first thing I think, the reason why I think it's important, is because it shows us that bewilderment, 
confusion, and uncertainty is the lot of those who choose to follow, to follow their fallen mind rather than take refuge in God and his word. Amen. <laughs>
Somebody was saying about Kobe Bryant when he was in that helicopter, he died. The, it's because the pilot became disoriented. In the midst of the clouds, he couldn't see what he didn't know what was up and what was down. He, could, he had no visual. But he did not trust the mechanisms that were given to him that, that, that would lead him through the fall. Instead, he chose to trust his own ability. And there's somebody. And that's just like us. We don't trust the Bible. We choose to trust our own heart. We choose to trust our own ability. And whenever you follow your own heart, you always go wrong. Amen. Because your heart is muddy is, is and it's murky. Yeah. What's what he said? Look at, look at verse 19. It's a light that shines in a dark place until the dawn and the day star arise in your what? That, that means the word of God gives, gives, gives light. The word of God gives understanding. The word of God has helped you appraise things and value the right things to see things in the right way. Amen. Ephesians 4, 17 says that we are, we are not walk according to, to, to our to walk in futility, live with our sinful fallen minds. When you walk and you trust your sinful and fallen mind, you're going to walk and you're going to live in the shadows. If you live in the shadows, the Bible says you will always be stumbled. Amen. Amen. I know this is hard truth, but this is, it is the truth. Amen. Israel could not determine direction for themselves. Their job was, when they saw the ark, their job was to follow it. Amen. I can't tell you the countless examples I've seen this often in marriage. Hmm. <laughs> People trust their own heart and didn't trust God's way. Amen. To guide them. I counseled plenty of couples in premarital counseling and seen them go into marriages. And usually the ones that I see God attending their marriage with, with, with a special blessing, a special hand, those ones that endure are the ones who prior to getting married did it his way. Yeah. Did it his way. Why? Because prior to marriage, they were setting a pattern for what would happen in marriage. If they were prior to marriage, self-denying their own pleasures and honoring God. When they got in marriage, they were going to self-deny and honor God. Amen. Those who did not do that set themselves in a bad way. Hmm. They put their own pleasures before God's glory, and in the marriage, they put their own pleasures before God's glory. You see, when you follow God and you do things His way, there's a certain blessing that attends the union. I've noted those couples who I've, who, I've, who I've done counseling with, and I see them, I see God continue to flourish them. God continues to flourish those who respect His word. Because His word is a, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And if we don't follow His word, we will always be in the dark. Hmm. And then, Yes, it is. It is true. It is true. That we should follow God's word. Amen. Israel had in the Ark of the Covenant, Brother Nah, a symbolic representation of God's actual presence among them. The Ark had no inherent value. The Ark was simply there to communicate God's person and provision for his people. He gave them laws to live by. He gave them mercy if they felt to could live by his commandments. But he also had a staff in there because he promised them there was his protection if they would live up under his authority. Look at Daniel 4. Daniel 4. Are you there? I'm sorry, not Daniel 4. Uh, Deuteronomy 4. Are you there? Daniel 4, I mean, Deuteronomy 4, I got Daniel in my head. Daniel got my head. It's Deuteronomy. Verse 5 through 7. And if we behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. Mm. And your understanding in the sight of the nations, their obedience to God's cause was their wisdom and their understanding. Amen. I don't think we get to that. To us living by the word of God is not our weakness, it's our wisdom, it's our understanding in the light of a fallen world. Why are their marriages so messed up? Why are their societies so messed up? It's because they're going to drip from the authority of God's word. They have lost their moral balance. 
says in verse 6, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have a God so near unto them? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. God is near us. God is walking by our side and he is here to guide us. Amen. 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 Woe be unto you if you live by your counsel and not God's counsel. Amen. Amen. It's a great affront to God. I ain't, I'm not speaking about the, the, the daily, the practical matter of life. I ain't talking about what kind of clothes you should put on, what kind of a dress you should wear, a, a shoe you should put on. I'm talking about the general course of life. God should direct that. Amen. These things that would affect your life in terms of Him, God should make those decisions for you. Amen. Marriage is, is, is a life altering decision, career is a life altering decision. Where you will go to school will be a life altering decision. Where you will live may be a life altering decision. You should make that. God should make that, that decision. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Should he be your guide? Yeah. Let's, let's proceed. Let's move on. Not just the blessings of, and the benefits of being in covenant relation with God. Look at the function of wonders. In Joshua chapter 3. Joshua 3. Can you have it say amen? Amen. The Bible describes God as a God of wonders. But it's interesting to note that God is very purposeful in performing great works for his people. Amen. Look at verse number seven. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day when I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. That's the purpose of the great many signs and wonders. The first purpose of, of the signs and the great wonders of God was to prove his presence with Joshua. God wants to prove that he is present with his leader. How would God do that? I'm glad you asked. Everything would happen as Joshua said it would happen. In the same way that everything that Moses said happened according to the way Moses said it would happen, it's going to happen in the exact way, precisely how Joshua said it's going to happen. Amen. 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 And the God wants to magnify. God wants people. God wants to use that to earn the people's respect and trust. And the reason why God wants to do that. It's because the people must have, Joshua must be, must have authority that is unquestioned. Amen. Amen. How are you going to follow somebody and you're doubtful and you, and you have questions about them, you have great questions about them, about them? The, the key to leadership is trust and respect. Once that's lost, you ain't got nothing. Amen, somebody. When, when, when the people follow you, don't trust you, it's hard to follow. Yeah. Don't get quiet on me. Be, be, be honest. It's hard to follow somebody you don't respect and trust. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God has to do it the way that Joshua said it would happen. God has to come through to show that everything that Joshua said that his spokesperson, that Joshua was an infallible spokesperson for the Lord. Nothing that Joshua said could fail. Amen. Let me say this, a couple of things I think we see in there. One is this, and you put this in your notes. Biblical religion is marked by a certainty of beliefs and duties. I said biblical religion is marked by a certainty of beliefs and duties. Living for the Lord should not be guesswork. <laughs> Why do you have to guess how to, how to live for God when God gave you a whole man? God gave us the Bible, the, the B I B L E. That's the book for me. Yeah. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B I B L E. That this is our manual for life. You ain't got to ask 
Amen. And it's supposed to humiliate you. Act like, you know what? I don't know what God wants me to do. About what's my life? I'm not going to do. Oh, no, no. That, that, that's, not, that's not true humility. True humility rests on the, the authority of God's word. True humility receives the word of God as a child. They receive it and they take God at his word about things. How many of you know that to be true? Yeah. Israel was to have an unqualified confidence in Joshua because Joshua was, Joshua's voice was as the voice of God. If he could say something that did not come true, and how did they follow him? <laughs> I wouldn't follow it. They meant somebody. Yeah. Likewise, we follow the Bible because everything the Bible says is true. Yeah. Yeah. What does he know also? Myths have no binding authority on our conscience. Myths, lies, have no binding authority on our conscience. I think it was J.I. Uh, J. Packer who said that in the realm of belief, the only authority is truth. Amen, <laughs> somebody. We are not called to live a lie. We're called to live based on the truth. Christ Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? It shall set you free. Jordan shall be cut off from the water that come down. 
He's showing us God's supremacy over all creation. That whatever God creates, God sustains, God moves over. Amen. Amen. When the Bible says that God is Lord of heaven and earth, means that everything in heaven and everything in earth belongs to him, and he's going to rule. Amen. Amen. God has control over everything. And even when it don't look like that, and we're going to talk against God and raise and put out and say, God, why are you allowing these things to happen? The Bible says, be, be quiet, be still. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. In other words, I'm in control. Shut up. That's the Bible says. That's how God talks. I'm, I'm in control. I got it. Shut up. Amen. <laughs> you ever had your kid and riding on, on a road trip and ask you too many questions? You gotta kinda come start and think, okay, okay, listen. Why? Wait, 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 wait. If they don't trust you, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. God is sovereign, he's moving over everything in creation. Amen. Amen. I love that quote by R.C. Sproul said that there's not one, one magic molecule of loose in God's world. Everything in God's world he controls. In Christ Jesus says this, that, that, that not even a sparrow falls to the ground unless the Father has ordained it. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that, that your life and your breath is in his hand. He gave you a start day and he gave you an end day. And nothing you do in this life is going to alter that. Amen. Amen. People talk about you. I'm adding more years to my life. I'm not you now. You can't add more years to your life. Because your life is not in your hands. Your life is in God's hands. God determines when you were born, and God determines also when you're going to leave. Amen. 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 He's controlling everything. And one thing I think about the things that we've learned in this, this pandemic is that we ain't in control. Amen. 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 Humans assume an authority and power that we don't possess. Thank God for the scientific community. Amen. But they don't have all the answers. Amen. We hope for a vaccination. There's no guarantee. Amen. All things are in God's hands. Amen. Amen. He's the one who is the Lord of heaven and earth. He's the one. In, in, in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. We cannot take one step or one breath or without him. And therefore, the Bible says we should render praise unto him. That everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Because every breath you take. Psalm 106. 
Samo la stessa. Hai idea? I love it. Verse 2 it says, Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? In other words, he says, Who can lift the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all of his praises? Hmm. Well, no, he said, Who can lift the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can praise them half enough? Hmm. You see that? For every good thing that God supplies to his creatures, that's what he expects from us. In acknowledgement, he expects us to praise him and to thank him for it. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans 1 shows us that there's the tendency of fallen creatures not to do that. Are you in Romans 1? Come on, verse. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him, meaning God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He's speaking in reference to fallen men. Because that when they knew God, here's our problem, they glorified him not as God, neither were what? Thankful. Thankful for what? Thankful for who God is and what he does. All of creation owes God a thanks and a praise for who he is and what he does. Do you know who he is? He's the one who sustains you. Your life flows from him. Amen. If God was dead, you would not be alive. You have love. You have personality. That doesn't come from an inanimate object. That doesn't come by accident. That comes by divine intent. And there's a, there's a creator God who is purposeful and intentional in creating you in his image and after his likeness. Yeah. Man. That's the show. Yeah. How do we love? And where does communication come from? A constant accident? No. Come on here. Come on here. Come on here. That's almost as absurd as saying that there was a fire in the warehouse and out popped the weapon of the dictionary. There's too much purpose in creation. No, the things that we see in creation reflect our creator. The things we enjoy in creation are, are the gifts of our creator, and we ought to acknowledge them and be thankful. We ought, we ought to thank God for your health. We ought to thank God for your flow. Thank God for your strength. Thank God for your life. You don't make it by yourself. You made it because of him. Right. Everything you have is his endowment. The, the gift of intellect, the gift of grace, that's God's endowment. Some people can throw a 95 dollars out basketball. Some people can't. Right. That's God's endowment. But for whatever gift God has blessed you with, you owe him thanks and gratitude. You are the knowledge yeah. for it and bless him for it. God sent us, he blessed us for to worship him, to praise his name. Am I the only one that know that to be true? No. That when God blesses you, you are to praise his name. I, I can't wait to get to church to thank God for all that he's done for me. I can't wait to get here in public to declare his praises, to give God some PDA. Amen. You know, PDA is public display of affection. I ain't gonna bless God in private in my own car. I'm gonna bless God in church for the front of y'all. I'm gonna give God my best hallelujah. I'm gonna give God my best thank you. I'm gonna give God my best amen. amen. Because he's been too good to me for me to be quiet. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And how many know you can't help when you say so? God has saved me. God has redeemed me. God has created me. God has sustained me. I can't help but to bless his name. Amen. I'm still here. I have died, but I'm still here. Bless his name. Amen. Bless his name. I can't praise God in the grave. I'm alive. I'm going oh. I'm going to bless his name. I'm going to bless his name. We're too quiet up in here. We ought to bless his name. Praise him. Said praise him with a shout. 
shout. Praise him with a hand clap. Amen. Amen. And don't, don't tell me how they praise God. I was in Israel and I watched them on their celebration coming through, coming through the temple. Those boys jumping up and shouting and yeah. praising God. Yeah. We ought to be doing the same on Sunday morning because we got much to be thankful for. Yeah. Amen. 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 Even in America, God has shown us great common grace. Amen. We're allowed to worship freely. Yeah. We gotta worship, uh, worship on the ground in somebody's house. We need to come out in public. That, that's God's goodness toward us. Man. And you ought to thank God for these mercies. You don't know how long they're gonna last. Amen. This country is changing. And there's somebody, I said, I said this country is changing. Yeah, it is. And it's turning up the heat on the church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So while we got these blessings, while, while we can't meet publicly, we ought to bless them for it. <clears throat> My last point is, go back to Joshua 3, not just the blessings and benefits of being in covenant relation with, with God. He saw the function of God's wonders, that God had specific use in performing wonders. One is to prove his presence to with Joshua, but also to prove his presence among his people. Yeah. Now I want to talk about God's power and my own display. Yeah. In Joshua chapter 3, come on down to verse 14. 14. And it came to pass when the people were moved from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priest buried the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they bear the ark, were, as as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in, in the brim of the water. Their feet touched the edge of the water. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that upstream, God cut the waters off. Mm -hmm. They were at the brim of the waters. The waters were overflowing his bank. The waters were troubled, making the the river uncrossable, but when the priests out of obedience to the Lord put their feet in the edge of the water, God cut the waters off. Amen. I'm talking about God's power. Amen. Can I say this? That as Christians, we don't believe that we live in a closed system. Amen. We don't believe that, 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 that what we see is all that we get. Amen. We believe in the invisible. Amen. Amen. We believe that there are invisible principalities and powers at work, but we also believe that there's an invisible God who is overruling all things in this world, who has power to intrude in his own world. Yeah. That God, whenever he gets ready, can intrude and invade human history yeah. and to do things that doctors cannot do. Yeah. Amen, somebody. He can come into time and history and perform a miracle. Amen. And there's some God. That's what God is showing us that the, the walls were stopped up. The walls stopped up. God damned the walls up and allowed his people to walk across on dry ground. He did it once at the Red Sea. He's doing it now again at the Jordan River. God is faithful. The same God who set our people free yesterday is the same God who saves and sets free today. Amen. We have a God, church, listen, who can invade human history. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We serve a God who can hold the sun in its place, mm -hmm. keep it from turning on its axis. We serve a God who can spin the water, the properties of water, and walk on water. Yeah. We serve a God who yeah. <laughs> can turn water into wine. Yeah. We serve God who can get sight to blind. We serve God who can heal the lame. We serve God who can raise the dead. We serve that God. And you ask me, Pastor, when Pastor gets here, does, does God still does God still work wonders? Absolutely yes. Yeah. He still works wonders. And sometimes we don't often see what we, what, what we have. We have a truncated view of God's word. We, we, we have a narrow view of God's word. We think God's wonders are primarily his blessings and providence. Yeah. I thank God for my clothes. I thank God for my food. Those are blessings and providence. God gives me something to 
something to eat. That's a blessing of God. God gave me education. I'm in school for five years. God gave me, God gave me blessings of God. He gave me a good wife. That's a blessing of providence. I'm thankful for that. But that's the outskirts of God's power. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes we think, we think about God's wonders as his special mercies. Sometimes you're on your sick bed and about to die. And the Bible says that you pray to God and God lifts you up. Heals your body and restores you. I seen it happen to my own bed. Amen. His whole body was shut down. And God, through his mercy, especially when lifting him up off his, off his deathbed. I don't know if you've been there before. <laughs> Have you ever been sick and couldn't be well and God healed your body? Yeah. He gave you special mercies. But those are the outskirts of God's power. The eye of God's power is his saving mercy. Yeah. Amen. I told you before that this instance in Israel's history represents God's faithful deliverance for his people, and it points forward to Jesus Christ, Amen. who gave us final deliverance, our creator, who went before us in death, and in his death, he has conquered sin, he has conquered death, he has conquered the grave. Aren't you glad today? Yeah. Let me tell you what about him. The Bible says the same thing about him that it says about the Father. That he is now Lord and ruler over all. That he is supreme in all things in this world are under his control. He's Lord of the universe and head of the church. Amen. Aren't you glad today? Yes. We experience God's wonders every time we hear the proclamation of the gospel. We as lost sinners in just, dead and trespassed in sins through the preaching of the gospel are connected to the one who gives eternal life and that's Jesus Christ. Yes. This is the greatest demonstration of God's power this morning. When you hear the word of God proclaimed, you receive his sacraments, and God ministers to your soul life, yeah. strength, comfort. There's no power like that. God quickens the power. We thank you for giving you praise today.